Wait, hold on a second. How much should we be paying for one of these? Mattel Creations have similar products like this listed on their website for 33 bucks, which would mean that UK collectors would pay a total of £42, including shipping, to buy one directly from Mattel. So, does that actually mean that this product is a huge win for everyone living in the UK, as I paid $24.99 in store at Smith's Toys? Please leave me a comment and let me know. How much do you pay for a Hot Wheels Premium Collector's Display Set in the country that you live in and if you think this product is good value or if you avoid this series completely. No matter what everyone else thinks, you better believe that this premium Porsche Collector's Display 4-pack was 100% going to be added into my diecast collection. Right off the bat, I want to point out that Mattel might actually be onto something here, but and this is very debatable, the T1 Transporter and the 917 have both been placed under individual plastic blisters for the first time ever in this series. Do you think that it now makes it harder to enjoy this set inside of its packaging? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here's a quick look at the back of the box for everyone who's curious to see. I really like this officially licensed Porsche product holographic sticker placed here in the corner. This premium collector's display is now the 17th Hot Wheels product that is presented in this way, which includes three premium cars and one transporter. These things are notoriously difficult to open as Mattel are very keen to keep all of these premium products firmly in place inside their packaging. But with all of this said, let's crack this display open as the yellow 1967 911 is a brand new casting for 2024. And I really can't wait to set all of these German racers and their VW Transporter free from their packaging, take a closer look at everything on the turntable, and later on in this video, we can throw everything into some epic drag racers too. I definitely recommend using a sharp craft knife to navigate your way around unboxing one of these products. And please make sure you're not pulling on these castings too hard to free them as you will bend and even break their axles. In fact, if you need to use anything but light force to open this product, then you're doing it wrong. Start by completely removing every single piece of tape from the bottom as you can see here. If you're trying to free everything from the other side, again, you're doing it wrong. Let's open one of these plastic blisters and see what Mattel has been up to here. Oh, okay, that's actually really cool. Probably also a little bit over-engineered and a massive waste of plastic, but I suppose if you're recycling everything, it's not so bad. It's also not ideal, as I definitely think it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing for a Hot Wheels Premium collector's display set. But also, I really, really hate those stupid rubber bands so much. The Volkswagen Transporter T1 pickup is a super small, super cool retro casting that Hot Wheels first released back in 2018. The other three VW pickups like this one are all pretty special, but if I had to pick one, then I would say that the original Team Transport number no. one VW pickup is the best version of this casting that we have to date. Just for fun, here's the super tiny tuned Porsche 911 Turbo having a great time riding on top of this T1 pickup. And now let me show you another small but mighty Porsche that looks great on top of this VW pickup. How about this multi-pack exclusive Porsche 356A Outlaw in blue as an homage to the original Team Transport number no. one, but this time shown here in red and blue. Nice. Okay, 
so we're definitely not opening these cars in order. And moving on, let's set this psychedelic dark blue and green 917 free from its packaging and we can deal with those tricky rubber bands next. I actually do have the mainline basic version of this casting which I picked up simply just because it's a Porsche. And now I'm super glad that I did. This casting definitely looks the best when viewed from the top. This is the second premium version of this casting. And whether you love or mostly dislike the psychedelic livery on this Porsche, you have to admit that this race car looks like something that Hot Wheels would have come up with themselves. Even if this wasn't a real world 164 scale replica of the 1970s Porsche Endurance race car. This Porsche 917 LH Hot Wheels casting was first released back in 2018. And its wild hippie livery is based on the real world 917 which competed in endurance racing competitions between 1970 and 1971. Fun fact, the letters LH come from the German word Langheck, which means long tail. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of this psychedelic premium car next to the mainline basic version, which was first released in 2020 and was car number four or five in the Hot Wheels Porsche series. Grab your craft knife again and let me show you the best way to set these collector display cars free from their packaging. Flip the packaging back over like this and hold on to the car. Carefully use your blade to cut through all the rubber bands like this. Then carefully pull the car away from the packaging and what you'll be left with looks like this. Those poor axles looks horrendous and what you need to do next is very gently pick at each rubber band and pull them out precisely. You shouldn't need to use much force at all to accomplish this. And with time and patience, you will have a beautiful Porsche 911R in your hands to admire in full. As I mentioned, this is a brand new casting for 2024. And Hot Wheels have used the same wheel design that we saw super recently on the exotic Envy Porsche 911. And those red wheels, I thought, were one of the nicest aspects about that release. And we do have this really cool Porsche branding on the back to make up for the lack of a Porsche shield on the hood. Only 24 real world super lightweight Porsche 911 Rs were manufactured between 1967 and 1968, including four prototypes. This vehicle was designed to push the 911 to its limits. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of this casting next to the exotic Envy 911 rocking the same wheel design, but I must say that the tampos used for the headlights on this collector's display 911R put the exotic MV car to absolute shame with its unfinished looking simple silver circles. And lastly, I couldn't leave out this casting having lots of fun riding on top of the T1 pickup. And these two are a very well suited match in bright red and bright yellow. Good work, Hot Wheels. And last but not least, perhaps saving the best Porsche until last, let's set this super cool Brumus livery 935 free from those dreadful rubber bands and take a closer look at everything in more detail. Not to be confused with the Hot Wheels Porsche 935, which is a track only race car version of the 935 that we have seen very recently as a super treasure hunt, as car number 87 in the Boulevard series and the 935 from the Car Culture race day set. And let me show you the main reason that you should definitely open your Hot Wheels as there is lots to enjoy about the Brumus branding being placed here at the rear portion of this diecast model version of the Porsche 935. And I'm sure that lots of other diecast collectors would agree that this one is the best looking Porsche in this collector's display set. 
Hot Wheels first released their Porsche 935 Group 5 casting back in 2021, which is one year before the 2022 935 that we've been seeing a lot more recently. Without question, those real rider wheels are the star of the show. Although the fact that this 935 comes in a brumous livery is definitely another reason that this release will be very desirable amongst collectors. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of these two 935s so that you can clearly see the difference in design between the two. Personally, I like the body shape of the 935 from the collector's display set the best. And whilst we're here, let me show you the 1986 Brumus livery 959 from Team Transport number 61. And this leads me on to a very important test that we need to move on to next. Let me show you the 959 driving into its supporting Brumus livery hauler. And even with its super wide Group 5 body kit, this Brumus livery Porsche 935 also fits perfectly inside the Euro hauler. And that means it's a huge win for us Hot Wheels fans, as I know that a lot of collectors would have been very disappointed if this casting would have failed this crucial test. Good work, Mattel. And lastly, just for fun, to show you guys just how small the VW pickup really is, here's the number 29 Aerolift Transporter for size comparison. And in fact, this casting can easily be stacked on top of the Aerolift Transporter. This said, we now must add a tuned Porsche on top as well to complete the look. Perfection. Moving on, let's get right down to business and to officially find out which casting is the fastest in a drag race. I know that everyone will be as excited as I am for this Custom Collects channel first as we must test if the T1 pickup is able to make it round the drag loop as it would be perfect if all four castings from the whole Porsche collector's display set could be included in one epic drag race. So buckle up and get ready for this one in five, four, three, two, one. Come on little VW pickup, I believe in you. Oh no, the heavy metal cab unfortunately drags the VW back down to earth and as it rolls away in total failure, I can also report back to you guys that I really did test this about five times in total, but sadly to no prevail. So. The VW Transporter was a massive fail, and that can only mean one thing. The super fast Brumus livery 959 Porsche will be placed in the fourth spot in our first drag race. So buckle up once again and get ready to witness our first all Porsche race for today's video. Everyone hits the loop. Oh, and as the 911R tears off into first place, it's going to be very close between the 959 and the 917. But as we can see here in the slow motion replay, catching up to the 959 towards the finish line and finishing in second place only just is the 917. The 959 takes third place and struggling to keep up with the competition in this race in fourth place is our Brumus livery 935. Okay, let's do that again and mix things up for race number two. In lane one this time is the 917. The 911R moves over into lane number two. The 935 is now in lane three and the 959 is in lane four. Everyone hits the loop. The 911R will take first place comfortably once again. The 959 accelerates into second place this time. The 917 will finish in third place. And that means that completing the race two business days later is of course 
the Porsche 935. Okay, this race goes out to all of my subscribers who remember my Porsche race all in blue. All four lanes are now filled with the most important yellow Porsches that we need to watch in one epic drag race. Everyone hits the loop. Oh, and no way, the 911R destroys the basic mainline Porsche Carrera, proving for the second time on this channel that it is totally possible for a premium car to outpace those lightweight basic cars with their super fast plastic wheels. Okay, so that Group 5 Silhouette Porsche 935 is super slow. So let's find out which 935 is truly the best 935. In lane two is the Boulevard 935. In lane three is the Race Day 935. And in lane four is a basic main line. Okay, this is where you say, Everyone hits the loop. Oh, and of course, the mainline 935 flies into first place. The Boulevard 935 cruises into second place. The race day 935 finishes in third place. And that means that unfortunately, even though it looks super fast, the Porsche Collector's Display 935 crawls into fourth place once again. In our final drag race for today's video, Let's find out if our super fast 911R has what it takes to defeat all three colors of the basic mainline Porsche Carrera that I own in one epic drag race. Everyone hits the loop. Oh, and no way the sneaky orange Carrera was still first place this time. However, Known as the first loser to some, I think that the 911R finishing in second place is a huge W for premium cars. Defeating the white and yellow mainline basic Carreras is still really awesome to see, and I won't be forgetting this drag race on the channel anytime soon, that's for sure. Let me know your thoughts about the race, and if you think that this Porsche display set is a pass or a grab. If you would like to watch another epic drag race filled with even more Porsches, then you should definitely check out this video right over here. Appreciate each and every one of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one and stay lucky fellow diecast collector.